Hi, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves in Tweed. Here I talk about tea, tea history, and all things tea. If that sounds like something you would enjoy, be sure to subscribe so you can follow more of what I do. Today I'm sharing another historical tea session. Today we're looking at Song Dynasty tea, which also happens to be the origins of the Japanese matcha ceremony. So today we're having tea with Li Qingzhao. As I mentioned in my video about the historical context of blooming teas, the Song Dynasty was where Chinese tea culture really went from looking at tea as a medicinal beverage to looking at tea as an aesthetic practice. And in the Song Dynasty, tea was considered one of the refined arts along with the appreciation of incense, flower arranging, the appreciation of painting and playing music. So today I'm going to share a tea session inspired by a Song Dynasty poem by the poet Li Qingzhao, who was considered one of the most famous poets of the Song Dynasty. And in particular, one of the things that drew me to her poetry was that many of her scenes are intensely personal and private. And she describes these personal scenes, many of which include tea. So while many of her scenes with tea include celebrations and wine and lots of people, in one of her poems, she describes a very private, personal, early morning scene in the early spring. So first, because along with the appreciation of tea, the appreciation of incense is one of our refined arts, I'm going to have a stick of aloes wood incense which was very popular in the Song Dynasty. This I've gotten from Totem Tea, which sells traditional Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, and Mongolian incenses. And this is an incense that Li Qingzhao mentions in her poetry as well as being one that was known to be popular in the Song Dynasty. So it seems like if she were going to have a quiet tea practice by herself, she might light a stick of fine incense. And now, let's read Li Qingzhao's words and see how she describes her tea session. Spring comes to Long Gate. Spring plants are verdant. Red plum blossoms are beginning to open. Not yet in full flower, cyan clouds cover the grinder. Jade slivers lie piled like dust. My lingering dawn dream is abruptly broken by a pot of spring. What a lovely description of a cup of green tea, a pot of spring. And I feel the same way. I've talked in the past about how I feel connections to these figures from history. And in particular, I love this idea of thinking about a cup of tea as a pot of spring, because it really does feel that way when the new spring green teas come in, it feels like that is when spring has really come to my tea room. So let's brew. So here we have our brewing setup. And in the Song Dynasty, as I mentioned before, teas were generally compressed into bricks or balls. And one of the most prized teas was called Anji Bai Cha, which is a green tea, not a white tea, despite the name. Bai Cha means white tea, and it referred to the pale color of the raw leaves. And here I've taken some Anji Bai Cha and steamed it and compressed it into a dragon ball myself and wrapped it in linen and dried it in my oven. And then it would have been ground in a tea grinder, as mentioned in the poem. And of course, I don't have a tea grinder. So I'm going to try to grind this in my mortar and pestle and see how good a powder I can get. You can see my little compressed tea ball. And I'm going to break it up a little bit. So now I have my mortar and pestle. My uh, pestle broke because I dropped it on the floor. And the poem talks about these cyan clouds, which is this tea dust 
that is kicked up as you're grinding the tea and using the tea powder. So it must have been ground to a pretty fine powder. And we know that in the Song Dynasty, whisked tea became not just a tea practice, but also a competitive practice. And tea makers would gather and have contests to see who could whisk the best bowl of tea with the best foam. So now I'm going to prepare my whisk. And now I'm going to sift my tea because obviously I don't have as fine a powder as I would have gotten from a proper tea grinder. And now I can add a little bit of water. Well, it seems that I didn't get my powder fine enough to whisk up. So I am not an aesthetic Song Dynasty tea master. Ideally, this would have a beautiful white froth that would be set off by the black tea bowl. But let's give it a taste. Interesting. So when I did my video about Lu Yu, I used commercially prepared uh, Chinese powdered green tea. And it was very harsh. And I think that the fact that I'm using a pretty nice Anji Bai Cha is making this rather an enjoyable bowl of tea. It really is a pot of spring. There is sediment on the bottom, but it does just taste like a fresh green pot of tea. The aloes wood incense gives this beautiful ambiance. It's not overpowering. I love these incenses because they're a little bit delicate. Ooh. The interesting thing about Anji Bai Cha is that this tea was named by Song Huizong, the Song Emperor who wrote another of the important classics of tea about Song Dynasty tea preparation. However, the bush was lost to history. And in the 80s, some people stumbled upon a tea bush and they realized that it seemed very similar to how this bush was described in Song Dynasty writings. So they claim to have rediscovered this Anji Bai Cha tea bush. And that is what I've bought, of course. Um, so who knows if this is the real Anji Bai Cha, but it has these needle-like leaves that she describes as jade slivers. It has this pale, pale leaf color and these kind of downy hairs, which is why it's called Bai Cha, which means white tea, even though it's not processed in the way that a modern white tea would be processed. It's describing the leaf, not describing the processing. Um, so it's interesting to have that little connection across history. So this was an investigation into Song Dynasty tea through the writings of Li Qingzhao. I hope you enjoyed this historical tea session. And of course, I always welcome your comments and questions and any suggestions you have for future sessions. And I look forward to having tea with you again sometime. Bye.